an international team of researchers are focused on the Gulf of Mexico. There we go. These are some of their stories, intimate portraits of research, innovation, discovery. I'm Matt Damon. Please join me on a journey marked by unexpected twists and turns. In 2010, the largest offshore oil spill in U.S. history occurred. Ever wonder what it was like for those who lived and worked along the Gulf of Mexico when they first heard about the Deepwater Horizon disaster? When the explosion of the Deepwater Horizon rig occurred, we were all in shock. We all saw the, 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 the horrific pictures. We all thought and prayed for the families of the crew members on the rig, and we knew that some, obviously there was some loss of life there. Everybody's thoughts were very bleak. Um, thinking that in the back of your mind, this, this could be the end of shrimping as, as we know it. People had questions, people were angry. There was a lot of concern about the seafood safety. There was concern about uh, fishing closures. There was concern about what would happen to the tourism industry, uh, what would happen to people's way of life who, who rely on a lot of the industries that depend on a healthy Gulf of Mexico. The impact of the oil really was twofold for our tribe, the United Home Nation. Our shrimpers had their boat loaded down with ice, fuel, and ready to go out. But just as they were getting ready to go out, the oil spill happened and really closed the season. There was a lot of anger, drinking and a lot of family abuse because the spouse is not able to go out and, and earn a living. All of our tourists left, everybody evacuated, basically left, didn't want to be here. Afraid of not understanding what kind of physical harm that might bring to humans or what could we do and what could we not do. A lot of just unanswered questions created a lot of fear and concern. We smell fumes from oil. Is it safe to stay here and breathe? Can we get in the water? Can we walk on the beach? Can we eat the seafood? And all of those things were, don't know, got to find out. Everybody was panicking. I mean, you got to understand, in 2004, we had Hurricane Ivan. Then you had Katrina. Then the housing bubble burst. Then you had the financial crisis. And then you have an oil spill. I mean, folks lost their homes, declared bankruptcy. They lost their businesses. Families split up over the emotional, financial uh, angst and stress that was created by the spill. Shrimping has been in my, my family for, for four generations, and it's just all we've ever done, and the way we've always supported our families. So even the thought of it to one day not being in existence was just, it was so fearful, it was unbelievable. I do have hope for the future. I really believe that because of what we've experienced together, we've bonded. Those bonds and those relationships that have formed during this time are going to go a long way at helping us towards future events. It may not be an oil spill next time, it may be a hurricane, it may be another economic downturn, but sometimes going through these really tough situations give you that experience that you need to face the future. Today, the scientific community is working together to push the boundaries of what they've learned about oil spills and what still needs to be discovered. <laughs>